The LDS Church claims that it is the one true church upon the face of the earth, and that all other churches are abominable in the sight of God. In this continuing video series testing the claims of Mormonism, I will take a look at the Mormon doctrine concerning the Tower of Babel and the story of the Jaredites. The Mormon Church claims that, about 4200 years ago, God prevented the building of the Tower of Babel by confusing the languages of mankind. Jared and his family were spared this change and were led to the Americas, which were a choice land especially preserved for them by God. As Noah's family multiplied once more, many were taken up in wickedness. Driven by pride, they built the Tower of Babel. God allowed the judgments of heaven to fall upon them. Their language was confounded, and they were scattered abroad. Only a few who were obedient were preserved. Among those preserved was the brother of Jared, a man of great faith, who pleaded with the Lord on behalf of the righteous Jaredites. The Lord led them to the American continent. So we see that the church teaches that 200 years after the flood, all of mankind, the descendants of Noah, spoke the same language and lived in about the same area. They were so wicked and full of pride that they attempted to build a huge tower that could reach heaven. This displeased God, so he confused their languages so they could not finish the tower. After their languages were changed, each group then separated into the different countries we see today. This is why people in different parts of the world speak different languages. Jared and his family prayed to God to prevent the confusion of their language. God showed them favor, let them and their friends keep their language, and eventually led them to the Western Hemisphere. The Book of Ether gives a history of a civilization. The Jaredites, who left the Old World at the time of the Tower of Babel, approximately 2,200 B.C. The Lord directed them to journey across the sea to the Promised Land in divinely designed barges. Eventually they departed from the Lord's ways and destroyed one another in about 600 B.C., thus ending approximately 1,600 years of Jaredite civilization. In these divinely designed barges, they traveled with all of their animals, food, water, fish, containing vessels, and swarms of honeybees across the ocean for almost a full year. The new world that God was taking them to was a land which is choice above all other lands of the earth. And this land was the land of promise, which was choice above all other lands, which the Lord God had preserved for a righteous people. God covenants with the Jaredites that Whosoever should possess this land of promise, from that time henceforth and forever, should serve him, the true and only God, or they should be swept off when the fullness of his wrath should come upon them. Joseph Smith taught that the Jaredites were the first to colonize the Americas. He wrote, In this important and interesting book, speaking of the Book of Mormon, the history of the ancient Americas is unfolded, from its first settlement by a colony that came from the Tower of Babel at the confusion of the languages, to the beginning of the 5th century of the Christian era. We are informed by these records that the Americas in ancient times had been inhabited by two distinct races of people. The first were called Jaredites and came directly from the Tower of Babel. From what is recorded in the Book of Ether, and from what Joseph Smith taught, it is to be understood that the Americas were unpopulated when the Jaredites arrived. So how do we test these claims of the Mormon Church? As far as I can tell, there are three claims here that must be tested. The first is the origin and evolution of language. The timeline for the story is around 2240 BC. The study of linguistics show that languages are continuously evolving over long periods of time, and can be tracked back at least 12,000 years. They diversify slowly over centuries as groups of people become isolated from each other. For example, it's documented that a single common language, Latin, was the ancestor of the Romantic languages Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian. It is also accepted that the Germanic languages, such as English, German, and Swedish, evolved from a common language. These changes happened slowly over hundreds of years. The Tower of Babel story, on the other hand, shows the languages emerging immediately, and that the sudden inability for people to communicate with each other was the cause of the divergence of the human population. This is the reverse order from what the evidence shows. The second claim we can test is the history of mankind's immigration to the Western Hemisphere. The Book of Mormon implies that the Jaredites were the first people to migrate to the New World. Joseph Smith explicitly taught this when he said the Jaredites were the first to settle in ancient America. However, when we look at the mitochondrial and Y-chromosome DNA markers of Native Americans, it shows that their ancestors migrated to North America, probably via 
Alaska, from Asia around 15,000 years ago. These findings are in harmony with the archaeological and anthropological evidence that previously suggested the same migrations. So if the Jaredite story is true, then they traveled in a very difficult and inefficient manner to the Western Hemisphere, only to find that the continent was already populated with people and animals. That makes their migration story and the great pains both they and God made to get them to the New World, and the promises made to the Jaredites about uh, this preserved land of promise that they were going to, pretty pointless. The last claim that we'll take a look at is an examination of the Jaredite barges. The barges were air and water tight, with no windows because they needed to be able to be submersible. This means that the people did not have any sunlight, only some glowing stones that God had touched. There was only one hole for ventilation, cut into the top of the barge. God had specifically told the Jaredites that they could not have glass windows on their barges because they would be dashed to pieces during the journey. The problem with this, though, is that glass had not been invented yet, and would not be by the Romans for another 2,000 years. That's a pretty big anachronism. These barges were described as being small and light and about the length of a tree. So to get an idea of what we're talking about here, let's give the barges an arbitrary size of 50 feet long and 25 feet wide. That gives us a square footage of 1,250 feet per barge. Now there were eight barges, so that is a grand total of 10,000 square feet for the Jaredites to store everything they needed to fit into the barges and bring to the New World. So what does the Book of Ether say they put into this space? Well, we had Jared, his brother, and their families. We also had their friends and their families. It also says they took with them their flocks and their herds, that they had caught a bunch of wild birds that they took with them, that they were taking along fish in some kind of container, and they, they were taking swarms of honeybees. Also, they took seeds of every kind, and enough food for the people and the animals for the length of the journey upon the water, 344 days. This raises some questions. How could all of these people, animals, fish, birds, and a year's supply of food for each of them fit inside a space of only about 10,000 square feet? Think about how much food your family eats in one year, and the space it would take to store all that at one time. Now imagine the space needed for the food for 40 to 50 people for a full year. That's just the people. Grazing animals would eat much more. If we took a conservative estimate of, say, 3 pounds of grasses and grains per day per grazing animal for 344 days, you would need over 1,000 pounds of food per animal. That doesn't include the space needed for bird seed or fish food and the physical room for everything to be and be able to move around, lie down for the people to work, to do waste removal. There is not nearly enough space to hold everything that the text says they took with them in that space. Perhaps it was just bigger on the inside. Given that there was only one small opening that was cut in the top of the barge after they'd already been built, how could there have been sufficient ventilation for all the flocks, herds, people, and birds to be able to breathe? Air does not easily enter a closed space because it is already filled with air. The carbon dioxide, methane, and other gases that would be produced by the people and animals inside these barges would have made the pressure inside the barges greater than the pressure outside the barges. The ventilation system would not have been able to keep the barges filled with fresh air. And needless to say, this would make breathing very difficult. Especially when the barges were buried in the depths of the ocean by monstrous waves and they had to stop the hole. They would have run out of air fairly quickly, trapped in those wooden boxes. How could they have kept the freshwater fish alive in containers while trapped in these airtight barges on the ocean for almost a full year? They would not have been able to keep the water in these containers oxygenated and the fish would have died. How could they have kept swarms of honeybees alive in these little airtight wooden boxes with no living flowers or plants, because they don't have sunlight, for a full year? How do they keep the food fresh for themselves and the flocks and the herds for a full year? And if these barges were divinely inspired, as the text says, and they were to be propelled by the wind, why did God not just show the Jaredites how to build a sail? The Mormon doctrine concerning the Tower of Babel and the story of the Jaredites is contradicted by science and critical thinking. The science of linguistics demonstrates that the origin of the languages, or any subset of languages, did not suddenly happen at the Tower of Babel. The science of biology, anthropology, and archaeology 
show that the Americas have been populated by a migration from Asia starting about 15,000 years ago, and have been continuously populated since then by their descendants and from people from other migrations. Critical thinking makes the logistics of the story of the Jaredites and their submersible barges seem impossible. These stories are myths. This means that the account of the Jaredites in the Book of Ether is a myth. What does that imply about the rest of the Book of Mormon? If the Book of Mormon is truly a historical record about a real people, then why does it contain the mythical story of the Jaredites?